my best to deliver this message to you this morning. Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 13. Verse 12, excuse me. He says this, he says, not that I've already attained, or I'm already perfected. And this is the part where we're going to underline it. He says, but I press on. Right? Now, I want you to say that. Say, I press on. He says, not that I've already attained or I've already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. There's another scripture in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, right? And you know it very well. It says, now to him, I've got to memorize. You've got to memorize the word. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything we ask or think, watch this, by the power that worketh inside of us. Say this with me. Say, power works inside of me. Say it one more time like you really got it. Say, power works inside of me. Power works inside of me. This morning, I want to just share this thought with you. The title of this message is The Will to Win. The will to win. You can go ahead and be seated this morning. How many feel like if you're going to get to the next level, there's got to be an adjustment in your will? How many feel like if you're going to get to the fullness of God's plan, you've got to have the will to win? The will to win. Because when we were given the Holy Spirit, church, he, he gave it to us. The Holy Spirit was given to us. He's a person really for the purpose of victory. God did not save us to lose. OK. Contra contrary to what the media says and to contrary to public belief. How many know we were not given the Holy Spirit for the purpose of losing? We were given the Holy Spirit for the purpose of victory. Thus, our name, Victory Outreach. We're not defeated outreach. We're victorious in all things. We've been given his power so that we can walk in the spirit of a winner. Walk in the spirit of a winner. Often, when we think about failure, and, and I really want some of you to hear this, we think of failure, uh, often we think failure is linked to big things in our life. You try to do something big and it doesn't work out. You try to accomplish something you've never done before and it, it doesn't happen. So sometimes we walk around feeling like failures when we try to do big things. But I'll tell you this. Sometimes when you try to do big things, you, you're going to fail. You, you're, gonna, you're not always going to reach your goal if you haven't prepared. But here's what I've learned about the difference between success and failure. How many of you want to have success in your life? How many of you that God has called you to live a Christian life of success? Well, here's what I've learned, that success and failure is not linked to the big things. Success and failure is linked to the small things. It's the small things that determine whether we'll be able to accomplish the big things or not. Are you with me? Someone say the small things. See, often people fail because they keep their eye on the big thing, but they're not paying attention to succeeding in the small things. It's the small things that lead you to the big things. It's when we fail to, to do the small things. Some people fail to tell the people they love that they love them. Some people fail to tell the people who help them, thank you. Thank you for helping me. It's the small things. It, it's, it's failure to say I'm sorry when we're wrong, right? You ever met those people that they don't know how to say they're sorry? They just think they're right about everything all the time. Failure is not in the big things. Failure is in the small things. It's failing to tell the people you love that you love them or to apologize when you've done wrong. Failing is also failing to get up to make a necessary phone call or, or get to an appointment that you're supposed to get to. See how you don't get excited? Because nobody gets excited about the small things. But understand me when I tell you that you're building your credibility, not in the big things. You're building your credibility in the kingdom when you're willing and able to do the small things. It's when we fail to make a call or an appointment. Failure is when we fail to follow through on a commitment or a promise. 
You make a commitment. I'll be there at this time. You don't show up. That's failure. You make a promise to somebody. Then you develop a reputation of never coming through because you never fulfill the promise. Stay with me. What is failure? Failure is, is failing to stick to a small task. You've given a small responsibility, a small task, and, and you can't do the task. And ultimately, what is failure? It is failure is failing to break through the things that used to stop you. See, when we think about all these small things, I, I want to be honest with you, those are the things that stopped you. Those are the things that stopped you from getting the big opportunities. The, the failure to say thank you, the, the failure to give honor where honor was due, the failure to be at the place you were supposed to be, the failure to follow through on the commitment that you made. That's why many people miss the big opportunities. But to get the big opportunities, you can't let the small things master you. You've got to master the small things. Come on, say amen if you're with me right now. Because winners have learned not to master the big. They've learned to master the small. Before David defeated Goliath, he said, I first defeated the lion and the bear. And I, I'll tell you, don't go after Goliath until you've first gotten the small victory. Learn to get up and pray and seek God in the morning. Learn, learn to walk in a spirit of love and humility. Learn, learn, learn to take care of the little relationships that God has given you so that one day when you get the big relationship, you'll know how to be a good steward of that relationship. See, it's the small things that lead to the big opportunities. The people who have the big opportunities, the people who are being successful, because you could have a big opportunity, but you're totally messing up right now. And the reason you totally mess up or you fail to be effective at the big opportunity is because you haven't yet learned how to master the small opportunity. Master faithfulness, master commitment, master keeping your word, master staying at your post, master not being down all the time, not letting your emotions get the best of you, but you taking control of your emotion and serving God, not in the big thing, not when you're up on the platform, but learning how to serve God when you're in the pew. Hey, come on, I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. Because when you master the small things, someone say the small things. Those small things, when you string those small things together, when you, when you string those small, don't, don't despise the small things. The Bible says don't despise humble beginnings. Don't, don't despise the small things. Because when you begin to master the small things, that's what helps to lead and determines how you'll perform when the big opportunities come. Because success is one step at a time. Tell your neighbor it's one step at a time. It's taking all the small things one step at a time. And when you learn to master the small things, when you learn to do the small things, that's what builds a life that makes a big impact. What, who am I talking to this morning? I'm talking to a room full of people who've overcome great odds in their life. <laughs> overcome great odds in their life. And the reason some of you have overcome the great odds is because you've learned to master the small things. Your life today is a culmination of time spent not on big things but on small things. Your life today is a culmination of overcoming the little battles, the little arguments, the little offenses, the little backstabs. Can I hear an amen? You survived it. So, so when, every time you survive something, every time you overcome something, it doesn't make you weaker. It makes you stronger. And I know I'm talking to some people here this morning that you are strong in the house of the Lord because you've learned to master the small things. And, and why am I speaking this message to you is I'm speaking this message to you is because as a church, we are on the brink of a new breakthrough. We are on the threshold of God getting ready to release a new anointing and release a new wine and release a new breakthrough and take this church to a whole nother level. But I got to talk to some of you who have not yet mastered the small things. You haven't mastered faithfulness. You haven't mastered humility. You haven't mastered tithing. You haven't mastered giving. You haven't mastered keeping your word. I came to tell you, if you want to go to the next level, you got to learn to master the small things because we're going with you or without you because there's a group of people that have mastered the small things and we're getting ready for God to do something bigger than we've ever seen before come on and shout in this place we're going oh come on somebody we're going 
We're going to another level. We're going to another breakthrough. We've been through the, the storm. We've been through the fire. We've been through the seasons of hell. But guess what? There's a new day coming. There's a new breakthrough coming. We're on our way. And you got to go with us. Don't miss the boat. Tell your neighbor, don't miss the boat. See, there's two seasons in a person's life. Either you're in a season of survival or a season of thriving. What season are you in? A season to survive or a season to thrive? Don't just look at me now. Say something to me. You're either in a season to survive or a season to thrive. Let me talk to some of you survivors. You've been surviving too long. It's time for you to thrive. It's time for you to move past the behaviors. See, because the behaviors and the habits you create just to survive won't help you when it's time to thrive. It's time to learn a new thing. It's time to grow in a new thing. It's time not to make excuses about your past and about what you've been through. Listen, my friend, we've all been through it. <laughs> We just determined in our heart that we were going to go to another level because we've been given the Holy Spirit because God is in us and we are carriers of the kingdom. Somebody say amen. And here's what I want to tell you. You've got to know there is more. Look at your neighbor and tell them there is more. We, re we win when we realize that the habit you create to survive will no longer work when it's time to thrive. And to be successful, it's going to require 100% focus in your life. It's going to require a certain attitude. Now, I'm not talking about that attitude. I'm talking about the right attitude. Because John Maxwell was correct. He said, your attitude will determine your altitude. And how many of you want to go higher this morning? How many want to go higher this morning? Then, then understand that it's going to require an attitude that says, no matter what I have to go through, I'm going to get better through it. No matter what comes against me, I'm going to get better through it. No matter what the enemy tries to throw at me, I'm not going to get bitter at it. I'm going to get better at it. Talk to me, somebody. I know I'm going to have to face some stuff. I know I'm going to have to go through some little things in my life, but I've learned to master the little things because it's the little things that lead to the big opportunities. And I came to tell you, get ready, because God is bringing a big opportunity to your life. But you got to be focused. You've got to be courageous. You've got to do better than the people who aren't saved. When the great general George S. Patton was asked about the strength and success of his troops, he said, my soldiers are not necessarily stronger. They're just courageous five minutes longer. Who wants to have success? Then all it takes is for you to be courageous five minutes longer than everybody else. Be faithful five minutes longer than everybody else. Be, 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 be giving five minutes longer than everybody else. Doing what you got to do. Come on, somebody. Don't let no one shake you. Don't let no one discourage you. Don't let devil in hell come in and try to take you off course. Am I talking to the right people this morning? See, what causes a person to win? What causes? This is a highly motivational message this morning, isn't it? You're like, Where, where's the word? We'll get there. But what, what causes a person to win? Have you ever wondered? What causes, what's the, the root of success in a person's life? What causes a person to have the will to win? Well, I'll tell you this. What causes a person to succeed is either inspiration or desperation. There are some of you here this morning, you, you have success because of a spirit of inspiration in your life. Just inspiration is enough to get you moving forward. But when I think about myself, my life was not birthed out of inspiration. My success was birthed out of desperation. Desperation. I, I think that when you think about me, I don't know about you, I, I just know me, is that I was motivated by the fact that my life was already, I had already received a sense of death and I hadn't even committed a crime yet. Because I was born in an environment of complete and utter failure in my family. I didn't have a choice. 
They say you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. Well, I didn't have a choice. Some of you grew up in a good family. I look at this gang over here. You know, you, my family's like, your family ain't messed up. You grew up in a good family. You just, you're just not grateful. But my family was all messed up. My, I grew up in an environment of failure. Anyone with me so far? And that does something to a person. My family was broken. My family labored and worked hard for no pay and no opportunities were given. No doors were open. In fact, doors were shut in their face. I never knew my grandfathers, my my. my my dad's dad abandoned him. He, he never knew him. My mom's dad died when she was 13. He was in his 30s. He died of liver failure in his, in his 30s because of drugs and alcohol. I never knew my grandfathers. None of the men in my family made it to 65 years old. My dad died at 63 years old. My uncles all died late 50s. One died at 40. One died in his 50s. One died right when he broke 60. None of the men lived past, barely past 60, that'll do something to a man. That, that'll put a fear and a desperation in a man. When you look at your family tree and you don't know your grandfathers and every man in your family was dead at 60, I'm 44, I don't got much time. I know you think it's funny, but that's what goes on in a person's head. I don't have much time. I don't have a lot of years left. If you go by my family tree, I don't have a lot of years left. So I'm not that inspired. I'm desperate. Some of you missed it because you're just in some other thing. But I'm talking to a people that say, I've only got a little bit of time. I only got one life to live. I only got one marriage to make it. I only got one, one group of kids to raise. I only got one church to be in. I only got one business to build. Come on, somebody. You, you, you've got to get desperate. You can't wait any longer. You've been waiting too long. This is your season to go to another level. You've got to get in the fight. See, if wisdom built the house, we had no tools. Because every person in my family failed. So what does this type of failure produce in a man? Now, I don't know about women, but men. It produces a will to win. It produces a fire that cannot be quenched. Let me talk to the brothers, man. Because I believe men lead, not women. Women don't lead. I, my wife don't lead me. I lead her. She may not always like how I lead her, but I lead her. And we need men with a fire in their stomach. We need men with a fire in their belly. We need men with a fire in their spirit. We need a man that will be focused, full of fire, full of the Holy Ghost. Your wife is not going to tell you what to do. You need to get up and be a man of God and pursue the plan of God and go forward in the things of God and build the house of God and build your family this morning. Come on, somebody. We need some real men in this place that recognize that you've only got one shot. Do not miss your shot. I'm preaching this morning. I've got a fire in my spirit. I've got a vision in my heart. I've got a desperation in my life. Because I'm only working with a short amount of time. See, none of these things became clear to me. Because you, you don't get this kind of revelation when you're living in the flesh. When you're living in the flesh, you actually spend more time destroying your life. But when you've been given the Holy Spirit, who the Bible says is a helper and is a teacher and is an encourager and is a helper given to us, watch this, to carry out the vision of God. When you've been given the Holy Spirit, that's when revelation comes about your future. It wasn't until I received the Holy Spirit in my life that I understand Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above. Watch this. By the power that work is inside of us. To understand that the manifestation of your dream and the manifestation of your life and the manifestation of where you believe God's going to take you. It, it's not going to be through some outer source. It's going to be when you develop within your heart the will to win. Ooh, I'm preaching. Too many people 
do not succeed because they underestimate the power of their own will. They underestimate the power of their own will. If God's will is to establish his kingdom, then our will is important because something happens. Watch this. When we submit our will to his will. Something happens when you take your will, which is meaningful, and you link it with his will. And I, I want to talk to those of you who think that your destiny is going to be produced by magic. I came to tell you, is not going to happen? Is it going to happen magically? Is not going to just rub a genie bottle three times and your destiny comes out? It's going to take when you begin to understand the power of a submitted will, the power of a renewed will, and you begin to take that old will and throw it away. And you begin to say, God, I need you to renew my will. I need you to redeem my will. I need you to restore my will. I need you to fix the fragmented will of my life and make it fully functional again. And then when God begins to restore and reestablish your will, you don't keep your will and run with it. You take your will and you link it up with God's. And that's when stuff starts to happen. Don't underestimate your will. Because the kingdom of God is established not only through God's will, but it's established through your will. Say my will. Jesus said this prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Heaven has a will, but the will of heaven wants to become manifest here. Come on, somebody. The will of heaven wants to be manifest here. The will of God wants to be manifest here. The plan of God wants to be manifest here. Who is he going to use? If he wanted to use angels, he would have sent them. If he wanted to use robots, he could have used robots. If he wanted to use animals, he would have used animals. But he didn't choose any of those things. He chose you and I to bring his will to power. Is this too heavy for you? He chose you and I to bring his will to pass because he gave us a mind and he gave us a heart and he gave us two hands and he gave us two feet and he gave us a mouth. And what he did through his blood is he changed it all. He redeemed it. Then he filled us with the Holy Ghost. And he says, now I'm going to use what you used to use for the devil and I'm going to use it for my kingdom. What you used to do in the world, now I'm going to do it for my glory. Come on and clap in this place. Your will matters. What God saw in you and I was a dedication to destruction. He saw a loyalty to wrong things and broken things. But when Jesus came into your life, he saved you and he flipped it. He flipped the script on your life. He flipped the switch on your life. He flipped the script on your marriage. He flipped the script on your family. You're no longer going, no longer going in the wrong direction now. He's filled you with the plan of God. And he says, I've chosen you to bring my will to pass here in the earth. Oh, my God. Come on and cl clap for this revelation. What am I saying to you this morning is that you carry something inside of you that the world does not have. You are a carrier of the kingdom of God. Woo. Touch your neighbor and say the power is in you. My God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven so what is God's will what is God's will that you would master the small things so that you can start moving in the big opportunities that you would learn to master the little challenges you have right now the little problems you are facing the little issues that seem so big to you right now, they're not that big. But if you'll master them, you'll truly step into bigger opportunity. Be faithful. Woo. 
be faithful. Stay away from unfaithful people. Stay away from people that do not value the will of God in their life. You can love them from a distance, but don't hang out with them because they'll take you away from God's plan. Master your mouth. Stop gossiping about people. What, what, I mean, come on, man. We're not in high school no more. What's the matter with you? Stop talking negative about everybody. Just zip it. My mom used to say, if you have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Just keep, don't go on Facebook, don't go on Instagram, just shut it. Master this. Don't gossip. Get away from a negative spirit that you have. Stop looking at all the bad and start looking at the good. Stop looking at what's not happening and start thanking God for what is happening. You're here. You're in your right mind. Come on. You may not be what you want to be, but man, thank you, Jesus. You're not what you used to be. You ought to give him praise right now. Stop being negative. Stop looking. Master the small things. Because when you master the small things, that's what leads to the big opportunities. How many opportunities have you missed because you can't master the small things? How many times were you mentioned? Your name was mentioned in the meeting, but you didn't get the task because you haven't learned to master the small things. How many times were you passed over at work because you can't master the small things? Master the small things. Master your will so that you can be effective for the master. Paul was a man who had the will to win. He had the will to win. That's why I love Paul. How many love Paul? And he wrote volumes for us to read about mastering your will and even in the Hebrew book we don't know if Paul wrote it but whoever wrote Hebrews had similar language and focus as Paul in their writings I'll just use Paul and say Paul wrote it all but the first thing we speak about we see about Paul is that number one write this down is that 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 Paul spoke of a determined will a determined will our will matters And, and to go to the next level number one You must have a determined will. To be determined in the dictionary means having made a firm decision and being resolved not to change it. Having made a firm decision and being determined not to change it. Why do so many people miss it? Why do they miss the big opportunity? Why do they miss success? Because they, 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 they have a habit of constantly changing their mind. Always changing their mind. You know, always, always change. You know, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to go there anymore. I don't want to hang. You know, I don't want to do that anymore. Yet, yeah, but God told you to do it. But I don't want to do. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm not seeing any result. The reason you're not seeing results because you have not yet mastered the small things. They lack the ability to stick to something long enough to see the breakthrough. (laughs) Many people, even in our church, have a tendency to do something only to the point where they feel good. Or let me put it this way. They only do something long enough until they no longer feel good. Do it till I feel good. Now it's time to change. No, no, no. Do it till you feel good, but don't quit till you get the breakthrough. Well, I don't want to do this anymore because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good because you haven't mastered the small things. And God will allow enemies to stay in your territory to build you up in character. (laughs) Moses went in the cave and he hid in the cave and the train of the rope went past him. And then the Lord spoke to him and says, he says, remove enemies. He says, no, I'm going to leave these enemies in the land for you. And the reason I'm leaving these enemies in the land for you, Moses, and for the children of Israel, is because those people don't know how to fight. They don't know how to fight. They only know how to cross rivers that have been parted for them. They have a welfare mentality. 
and I got to teach my people how to fight. So I'm going to leave some middleweights and some heavyweights and some lightweights in the land, and I'm going to teach you how to fight, and you shall not be defeated if you keep your eyes and your focus on me and on that promised land. Come on, somebody. You need a determined will in your life, and when you don't feel good, that's the time to fight. That's the time to stick it out. That's not the time to give up. That's not the time to throw in the towel. That's not the time to gossip. That's not the time to get negative. That's the time to say, I must be, be being taught how to fight. I must be in, in karate class. I must be in the gym. God is building me up because I didn't know how to fight, but now I'm learning how to fight through a determined will. I've got a will to win. Does anybody here have a will to win? You got to have a will to win. Tell your neighbor, you got to have a will to win. You got to understand that winning requires persistence. The San Antonio Spurs, who I hate, but I'm going to use it here. Lakers, Lakers. But they have this great quote in their locker room. They won five titles. And they have this great quote in their locker room. As they're walking out into the court from the locker room, there's a sign that says, when nothing seems to help, I go and look at a stone cutter hammering away at his rock. Perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet at the hundred and first blow, it splits in two. And I know that it was not the last blow that did it, but it was the 100 blows before it. Determined will. What am I saying? Just keep on hitting it. Just keep on hitting. Breakthrough's on its way. Just keep on. Don't give up. Breakthrough's coming. Keep praying. Keep giving. Keep sowing. Keep working. Keep laboring. You're going to get the breakthrough. Come on and clap in this place. Stick to the plan. Determined will. The second thing Paul talks about, well, it's actually in Hebrews, but, but we'll say it's Paul for the sake of argument. Hebrews 12, 29 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Watch this. For our God is a consuming fire. So the gospel writer said there's a determined will, but then Hebrews talks about a consuming will, an all-encompassing will, a will, a fire that takes control of your life. A fire that is birthed inside of a person who has the will to win. And you know that the fire is a heavenly fire. It's a fire from God. I love this scripture. And the reason I chose is because when I first got saved in my discovery of the Christian life, this was one of the first scriptures that ever impacted me. I have a number of scriptures that impacted me. This was one of them. When I begin to read it, begin to internalize it in my life. What I discovered is the strength and fortitude of what I had received. Because when you're newly saved and, and you're trying to make it and you want to develop the will to win, you have to know what's inside of you. And what the scripture told me is that there is a kingdom inside of me that is unshakable. Because I came from a family that was all shooken up. And I came from an upbringing that was all messed up. And when I gave my life to Jesus, something, or I should say the kingdom of God, was imputed to me. And it wasn't like a government you see in the world. It wasn't a kingdom like you see in the news. A conquerable kingdom. The kingdom of God that I receive with Christ is an unshakable kingdom. In other words, I've been given a kingdom that cannot lose. I've been given a kingdom that cannot be budged by the enemy. I've been given a kingdom that is stronger than any rock in the earth. I am now a carrier of a kingdom that is undefeated. And that did something to me. Because if I have a kingdom in me that can't be budged, then that means I can't be budged. 
Uh, I'm not saying stuff that's not going to come at me. But no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm not saying the devil's not going to bring accusations and try to bring fear, but no weapon formed against me. Greater is he that is in me who he's in. The world. He has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Why? Because I'm a carrier of a kingdom that cannot be judged, that is unshakable. Though governments may shake, no, though relationships may shake, no, though, though this human body may shake, there's a kingdom inside of me. In other words, what am I saying to you, church? I am not on the losing side. I am on the winning side. And it even gets better that as long as I'm doing God's will, people can walk away from me. People can quit me. People can turn their back on me. And God will always replace them. Because I'm not doing my will. I'm doing his will. And I'm a carrier of his will. And I've linked my will with his. And as long as I'm in God's will, God will bring me the people I need to get the job done. Some of you don't want to hear that. But that's the reality that I live in. Because people go, come and go. People are up and down. People are here now and gone later. But Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I've given you an unshakable kingdom. You have a kingdom that cannot be moved. You ain't hearing me on that one. And you know what the beauty of it is we just get to be a part of it. That as long as our will is linked with his will, we get blessed. That's the message. How many want to be on the winning side? Then, then you've, got, you've got to master the small and take your will. Someone say my will and link it with his will. And when you link it with his will, what do you get? You get the breakthrough. You get the blessing. Did you get something this morning? As they come to the keys, thirdly, the scripture, this is a fiery message. Woo, were you motivated? Some might say, well, I didn't like some of these. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. But I want to talk to the ones that said, I need a little motivation this morning. I needed to... Here, man, I got the will to win. Are there any winners here? Any winners? You're tired of losing. Come on, somebody. You, you, carry, you carry something inside of you that cannot be shaken. Therefore, do not shake. Don't rattle and don't roll. See, I'm a carrier of the kingdom. And then the third thing is that Paul, or for the sake of argument, Paul, he not only spoke of a consuming will, but lastly, he spoke of an enduring will. The will to win is always linked to a spirit of endurance. The key is this, is quitters can't win. Paul said it, he says, anyone who's in a race doesn't get the prize until they finish the race and compete according to the rules. In other words, there's no shortcuts. Tell your neighbor, no shortcuts. Tell them, no quitting. You got to endure. The Hebrew writer said about Christ, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. In other words, the reward of being seated at the right hand of the Father came through a spirit of endurance in Christ's life. And the beauty of that is that Christ broke through so that you and I could break through. See, because he finished, you can finish. That's why Jesus in heaven says, when we get there, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into your reward. The reward doesn't come to the quitter. The reward comes to the one who walks in a spirit of endurance. The reward comes to the one that masters his emotions, masters his tongue, masters his relationships, masters his calling, masters the small things. Paul spoke of an enduring will. 
And it's not that the people who endure never fail or the people who succeed never fail. One inventor said, I have never failed. I have only discovered 1,000 ways not to do a thing. He said, I've never failed. It's just I've discovered a thousand ways not to do a thing. Who knows what I'm talking about? That's me. I've discovered a thousand ways not to do a thing. And it's amazing what will happen for a person who doesn't quit. A person who just sticks it out when everybody else is fizzling out. It's amazing how the kingdom falls to someone who just has a pit bull tenacity. Come on, you know a pit bull, the, when it locks onto something, it never lets go. This is, you look at, look at, man, I don't have all the gifts, I don't have all the talents, but one thing I do is I got some teeth. And I'm just going to bury those suckers into my purpose. And no matter how it shakes, I'm unshakable, I'm, I'm unflinching, I cannot be moved. I'm going to lock in on my destiny, I'm going to lock in on the spirit of success, I'm going to lock in on the people, they're going to help me get to where I need to go. Are you with me here today? I'm going to endure, and not only in good times, but I'm going to endure in bad times, I'm going to stick it out when everybody else is quitting, I'm going to keep on giving when everybody else stops. Come on somebody, I'm not going to quit, I'm going to move into a spirit of success. Something's powerful when a person simply says, I won't give up. I won't give up. The will to win. The will to win. How many feel like that was awakened in you this morning? Awakened in you. Now, I know, I know that you're going to go through things. How many can say amen? You're going to go through some stuff in your life. You're going to hit some challenges, some personalities, some people that are going to try to discourage you and halt you and criticize you, say things about you that are not true. There's going to be some people you're going to do good for and they're not going to appreciate it. People you're going to try to help and they never say thank you. And then they, in fact, they do the opposite and say you didn't do enough. But that's why I love this scripture, one of the other scriptures I memorized. It says this, for your light and momentary affliction, Paul wrote it, is working for you a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Whatever you're facing in your life is simply working for your better, working for your good. If you say, I won't give up, I won't quit, you won't look the way you used to. You won't be the way you used to. You won't live the way you used to. But you've got to link your will with his will. And I don't know who this message was for. Maybe this message was just for me. But I get the feeling it might be for somebody. And what I want to do is I want to pray with those of you that say, Pastor, I want the will to win. I'm going to be a winner in the things of God. I'm going to be a winner in the plan of God. I'm going to stick it out. If this message ministered to you, I just want you to come and spend a little time with